Hello, my fellow car modelers, and how are you doing today? I am sure that you all have noticed that uh, over the past few weeks, there was a particular series that I had been working on over the past couple of years, an adventure in building a model car, where we were building the Monogram 66 Malibu Flip Nose. If you are watching this, obviously, I have returned the series, and each episode is now going to have this little foreword in it explaining why it was gone and why I'm doing the series and I'm going to bring it back. The reason why is that I don't think many of you understood why I was doing that series and what the purpose of this channel is. When I started this channel, I did not want to be like all the others, not saying that they're bad. I wanted to do something different. I was not going to be a build channel. I will do builds, but I'm not going to be a build channel. I wanted to be a model car hobby information channel and tip channel. So the whole idea, as was stated in the very first episode of an adventure of building a model car, was the reason behind the series was to just have a kit that I would work on through time to use as doing tips. So if you look at the episodes, they're not so much about building that particular model. It's about showing you tips in building a model car, my way of building a model car. It will not be something that I work on all the time. I will do other episodes on other subjects and I will build other models. I am not continually working on this 66 Malibu. This brought some criticism and misunderstandings where I would literally have people so enraged that I wasn't constantly working on it and wanting the rest of this series to continue on that they would threaten to write the channel off and unsubscribe. Well, I'm going to tell you this. That's not a threat that's going to shake me up. If you want to unsubscribe, by all means do. I'm going to continue on. That is why I pulled the series. I'm bringing it back for all of you. It is going to continue on and I will work on episodes as I see fit. Could take a couple of years before it's all done. And when it's all done, you're going to have a nice whole play set to watch from beginning to end. But if you're following it and anticipating the next episode and you're trying to build the same car along with me, I, I'm sorry. That's not what its intentions were. I'm not going to do it all the time. I want to do it in my time as I see fit. I have other things I want to do. Please respect that. It's not about the build of this particular car. It is about the tips and information that I'm giving you. That was my intention. Now you know. Let's continue on and let's enjoy an adventure in building a model car. Hope you enjoy it. Hello my fellow car modelers. Welcome back to another episode of an adventure in building a model car. So we're getting back on the Malibu flip nose and on this episode we are going to cover weathering the underside of it. We're also getting ready to get the whole uh, rear suspension together and have that all done. But on this episode what I want to show you is I want to show you how to make the whole underside and frame and everything of your model to look like what a real car that's been on the streets for years will look like just nice and grungy and some rust and not rust holes but just just good weathering i think you're going to get some really great tips in here if you've never done any of this or never realized of any of this product that's available to us to make our models more realistic looking you come to the right place this is the show for you so here we go So now that we're all done with the engine, we're going to move on to the chassis. And this episode, what we're going to basically concentrate on is the from the firewall back, as you can see on this one. The firewall back, how this kit is with the fabricated front end for the whole gasser look. We're just going to be doing that. So we're going to put all the rear suspension in, which we have here. We've got the Dana 60 rear end the kit comes with. There is a uh, cover for that. We'll get to that later. But there's the rear end. There are the springs, ladder bars, and a third link right here. How we want to go about that is, again, building the beater that we are building, is we want to make this look like a undercarriage that is used, not pretty, and pretty dirty. 
that's what we're going to accomplish at this time. Also, we have our chrome plated parts here of the suspension, the third link and the ladder bars there. And uh, it would be neat to keep them chrome and go with the chrome, but you know, with this older style, there's such a parting line, these older style kits have such a parting line on them. That to clean that up it would ruin the chrome so we're going to show you how to strip chrome too I sent that sailing didn't I let's drop it right here where you can see everything so that's where we're going with this today and I showed you in an early episode that we already removed the copyright engravings that were here got it sanded down smooth everything else seems to be fine there's no parting lines I don't feel there's anything else that needs to be removed on this so we're going to go ahead and paint this. So I went ahead and shot some primer all over the area that I took the copyright off. And I'm uh, just going to lightly sand that. And then we're going to be ready to paint. Now the first color that I chose that we're going to shoot the entire bottom with, actually the whole chassis, will be, to me, is NATO Black. The reason why I chose NATO black is because it's a black that's kind of a little more like a dark gray. It even has a little tiny tint of green to it. But it, what it's going to give us is that look that we're looking for of, you know, the chassis was all painted black at one time. But with the road use and grime and some rust and stuff, it kind of starts to change color and, and fade out and get a little more darker gray looking. And the natal black is going to give us that good base to work off of. And then we were going to weather on top of that. First to sand this area just to get it prepped so that we can paint over it and we won't have any ghosting. I am going to use a piece of my sanding pad. This is like about a thousand grit. I've got a little bowl of water over on the side here. I'm soaking that in there. In there. So we're going to do a little bit of wet sanding. It's not major work, so you don't need to like run it over water or anything. Just get the pad, and the pad holds water. That's the nice thing about having these sanding pads. And just lightly sand just the area. I'm not too worried about everything else. I just wanted to mainly sand the area where the copyright was and just get that all smoothed. You don't want to sand the primer off. You just want to lightly sand over the primer to get it smooth. So now that we got this all primed and sanded right there, that shouldn't ghost on us. We're going to put the base coat down for the chassis. Now, if you see that I put a T in red here and right here in white, there's a reason why. When I get some Tamiya colors that I'm going to strictly airbrush, I go ahead and pre-thin the entire bottle before I take any out. Because if you take a look here, it's all pre-thinned. I probably have to mix it up a bit. But there's a line at the bottle right about where you see that level at. And that is where you fill to when you're putting the Tamiya thinner in there to get it all thinned. And then we just shake it up. And this whole bottle is now prepped for airbrush use that way. It just seems to be a right ratio. That's a little tip I got from Andy at Andy's Hobby Headquarter. He's had stated that in some of his videos. The airbrush that I'm using is the Iwata Neo, which is just an outstanding airbrush for the price. Iwata makes really top-end quality products in the industry of uh, you know airbrushing and art. But the, the Neo was something it came out with about 10 years ago that was kind of an entry level, but at the functionality of their high-end brushes. Now, I had a friend of mine that was a professional airbrush artist that he had the really high-end Iwata, and he bought one of these, and he said this did just as good. Now, in an industrial setting like what he did, these don't tend to last as long, but for the hobbyist, these are perfect. I mean, we don't beat the heck out of them like, like an artist who does it for a living. So these work out perfect for us, and we get the quality and performance that uh, your higher-end Iwatas. I think they're about 69 bucks or something. You can find them at hobby shops. We have the air coming out of our airbrush compressor set at around 24 pounds. That's what I like to shoot with. I get a very good, good, consistent hit with that. And we can see... Eh, we're getting pretty good there. A couple things I like to do. I'm not going to make a suggestion for you to do it, but there's a problem with these Neos, though, that they, it's like this protective crown or cone right here. Its only use is to protect 
the needle and, and the nozzle portion in there because they're very delicate. And that's what this is for. But it has nothing to do with the actual shooting of the paint coming out. And uh, I take a chance and I just remove this because what ends up happening with this, and you can see how, you see that needle right there, how little it is. One thing that this thing does is it builds up paint on the end and it can drip onto whatever you're painting. So I usually remove this, but I really don't recommend doing this. You got to be real careful because one little tap of that needle and you got problems. You're going to have to replace that needle. What I had one friend of mine do is he actually ground down maybe like a sixteenth of an inch. He ground this down and it took care of his problems. And I've heard that there's a product out there now that makes them that they look like a crown now and, and there's not an issue with paint forming on the on the tip there and dripping onto whatever you're painting so that's what i've done i can get a good nice shot there you see it's coming out good so we're going to start shooting this i'm just going to cock that right there and we are just going to start spraying this baby Now, I'm not really worried about putting down a beautiful paint job on the bottom. Like I said, this is going to get really muddied up. And uh, you can see you can see how that color is, that dark gray. we got to get all those side areas. What I should have done is I should have put it on something the hole. I was kind of in a hurry here. Normally I would like tape this to the top of a old spray can or something. But uh, I was in a rush here and I didn't think about it. And so you guys get to see me do something wrong, I guess. But like I said, you know, we're not worried about a really beautiful, perfect paint job. We want to get this just covered with this NATO black. So there you go. I put a second coat on there and I'm going to go ahead and let that sit for a little bit and get completely dry and we'll take a look at it. It's all dry. You can see how it's got that, uh, you know, dark gray look about it. And this is going to be a great base for us to start our weathering with. But one thing I did forget about doing and something you always got to remember in some of these, these kits is the underside, mainly the tunnel here of the interior tub is a part of the underside of the chassis and that needs to get painted too to keep everything consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot that with uh, NATO black in here also and then we're going to start doing our weathering. That is NATO black and we're now let's let's uh, get some of the other parts all painted. I'm going to paint up the rear end the same color, some of the chassis parts, the springs. We're going to play around with those a little bit and uh, we're going to start the weathering. So the natal black is all nice and dry and you can see how flat it is, extremely flat paint. But uh, there's a little trick that I like to do with flat paint. You can kind of see I did it here. You see how there's some shiny? You can take a tissue paper or a, I just got a uh, paper towel right here and you just kind of buff it, you know, run across it lightly. You can hit all the areas, but you don't have to hit everything. You, basically, you're catching all the raised area. It just kind of, it brings out the detail and kind of gives you a, uh, a bit of contrast and depth to really see, you know, make it three-dimensional even more so. But it just kind of gives every, whoops, kind of gives everything a little bit better of a detailed look. And, uh... You know, you just rub across here and it basically knocks the roughness down a little bit and makes it have a little bit of a sheen to it. I'm going to not touch in these areas here like the wheel wells because those are going to be pretty grimy. I'm not going to worry about low spots, all the high spots, you know, like the frame. We just kind of want it to stand out over the rest of it. It just gives it a bit of a contrast. You see how that's doing that? And go across the frame here. And you can see that the edges even get like a lighter color to even the other buffed areas. So it, it just enhances your detail. Just kind of a neat little side effect of flat paints. 
Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not. That's why if you want something to be very flat, you almost can't touch it again. Or else if you do the slightest rub across it, it likes to buff out. And there you go. You can see how kind of it just gives a little bit more contrast. It's not just all flat. I'll show it a little bit around. You can see how the buffing does. And uh, now we're going to make up some rust. We're going to do a little uh, remember when test here. See how many of you have been keeping up on the old Mile Car Hobby Headquarters episodes. We're going to go back to something I said back in episode 7, my second part of cleaning up my model room. And you remember I found this packing material, these sponge like things, and I told everybody you're going to see these come up later on. So if you have anything like this, if you ever see any when you're unpacking something, new uh, electronics device, lots of times you find this stuff in there. It's kind of a, a spongy-like packing material um, to hold on to it. And today's the day that you're going to find out why I told you so long ago why you got to hold on to this. And here is the reason why. It is how we are going to do rust chipping. Huh? How do, how, I don't I don't get it. How? Okay, let's take a piece. Uh, I think I'll use this right here. We're gonna go ahead and rip it. And you don't want to you, you want it to be kind of jagged. You don't want it to be uh, a nice clean cut. So rip it, and you want it to be jagged. That is basically your paintbrush. Now we're gonna mix up some colors. I've got some Tamiya Nato Brown. Let's see that Tamiya Nato Brown. I've got some Tamiya Flat Red. And I think I'm going to take some of my NATO black, even though it's thinned. I'm going to take some of that. And here, let's put these over here. And I'm going to hold on to some of this yellow, too. And we're going to play, you know, let's make some rust colors. That game. I like that game. One of my favorite games. Take some tape. I'm going to just put the tape right there. And we're ready to rock. So, let's do some mixing paint press or whatever you like to use to dab paint. We're going to take some of this. We'll put some NATO black right there. Now we'll take the NATO brown. Shake it up. This is just freshly bought. Brand new bottle. We take it and as you can see compared to like when I showed you earlier the NATO black when it's mixed look how low the un, un thinned Tamiya colors are. But uh, I'm not going to airbrush this. I wanted this for brush painting and doing type of detail so we're gonna take a lot of this we want the majority of our color that we're making to be this brown alrighty pretty cool huh now next we're gonna take some of this red again I'm working with all flats you don't want to work with uh, glossy because you know when did when have you seen a rusted car look glossy it's all dirty, dingy. We're just going to have a little bit of red. There we go. So there is about our amounts that we want to use. Of course, you can play around with it and get different colors because there's multiple different colors of rust. We're going to mix this all together now and make our basically what we're going to create the illusion of is the chips in the paint and how the rust on the metal is underneath that paint. And we can go back and also put some more different colors in there and change the hue, make it a little more orange by adding that yellow. That's why I have the yellow. Now, I'm going to take, you know, my painting for holding forceps here and create my little tool here to dab and we're just going to dip some of this right in here and we're just going to start you know hitting areas let's get close here we're just going to start hitting areas get get our paint on there and just start hitting areas and especially like on corners and stuff like that but just you know where you'd see some real high especially back here where a lot of chips would would form from rocks coming up 
and hitting the metal. And you can see we're getting some some chipping effects going on there. It doesn't have to be perfect because you know things are random in in this world that we live in. Rocks fly up in all different areas. This gives you, as you can see, see it really good right there. You can see the the rust chip effect. And I know what you might be saying is like, hey, you know, a chip is, you know, what's underneath the black, like the black paint. You shouldn't be painting on top of the black paint because what you're painting is what's actually underneath it. But it, you know, it's all illusion. Once you get it all done, I mean, you can't tell which was on top and which was on the bottom, what's chipped away. It, it's all illusions. So what I'm actually going to do is you can see this is drying up. I did this more of an example to show you kind of a mix ratio, but I'm going to go ahead and mix myself up a, a concoction that won't dry up so fast. And I can sit here and just dab away and make myself a whole bunch of chips and that and we will move on to the next phase so let me get this all chipped up and i'll show you what i did i've been working on it and i just wanted to show you a little bit of what i'm doing is i, I get a little on there got to dab it i got i just work it in there and i got to dab a little and then you got to get a lot of the excess off because you're just wanting to put little little chip effects on there so you don't want globs of paint on there and you just kind of go across and really try to catch the edges and uh, if you feel like you you went a little overboard like I think I went a little overboard on a few areas that that's really okay remember this this thing gets banged up underneath with rocks flying up and everything so we're uh, we're gonna be okay because when you start layering down all your different chipping effects and weathering effects um, this is, you know, just one of the, one of the first layers, so it'll start coming into focus, but, you know, I got, I'm just going to dab some other areas. It's basically the, the darker rust is what you start with. You got my concoction here. It's still wet, a little dry. I'm going to add a touch more red to it now. Let's go with a little more red. We're going to throw in a little yellow there to get some orange happening. Get a good dab of yellow. I'm going to drop that in there. We're going to mix this all up. And we're getting, it's changing the color and making it a little more lighter brown, a little more rust. Maybe get a little more yellow involved there. So we're going to go ahead. I think I'm going to put a touch more yellow into this. Now just a little FYI, what I'm cleaning my brushes and my little siphon tube to get paint is I'm using just Windex. This is basically watercolors, acrylics, and uh, you can clean your brushes really well with just Windex. It's a little better than water. Just It gets, gets the brush in back nice and clean. I even clean out my airbrush with it after shooting these, to me, acrylics. I just use the Windex and heck, you know, I... I blow out my brush right here in the room and I don't have an issue because it's just Windex. We squirt Windex all the time in our house. Just not feeling the color a lot. I want it to red up a bit. I think that's going to help because we want some different shades of browns and rusts and stuff in your chipping effect. Just to, you know, there's always different degrees of rust and stuff. You can see there's different shades of rust. So we're going to get some going here, dab it up a bit, clean that sucker off, it's a little bit too filled. I actually might need to, you know what, I think I'm going to just be done with that and get a fresh piece, rip ourselves off a fresh piece. Start, well, like the word said, fresh. Bing, look, we've got a new one. So we're going to dab that in there, let's just start hitting this thing with a little bit different shade. I've got too much paint on there. And just start hitting all the areas and the edges with a lighter color and that just gives some different 
shade effects of rust and uh, makes it pop, brings it a little more to life. See that? See how? And, and I'm not pressing down too hard. You just want to lightly hit it because you just want chips to form. And even if you hit areas with the darker color, put a little bit of a lighter color over it, that's okay. This is all random. That's the fun thing. And we haven't really hitting the wheel well much. It's not going to be seen a lot. But another area that needs to get hit good. I'm going to go in here and hit this area a lot. because And there's two different shades of rust going on in there. So we've got that pretty well chipped. I'm going to show you another product that I like to use that gives you some really excellent rust effects. I discovered these quite a long time, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 years ago. And I really, really love the rust effects I can get with this. To me, a weathering kit. And there's several different ones. My two favorite is the one that comes with the rust and the orange rust. And you work with these two colors together to get that real rust looking. Because if you ever look at some rust, it's not just, just a rust color. It goes dark and then really bright orange. And you kind of blend those together. You can really get an excellent, excellent look that way. It's not really a powder. It's kind of a, I don't know how to describe it. But it's it's almost like a woman's you know, eyeshadow. But it's, it's a little more pastier. And what happens also, I found, when you once you put this on, it's not like a powder. Once it's on there, you, you, it kind of hardens and sets up. It won't brush off, like you're, if you were to use pastels or chalks or anything. But let's pick a place. We're going to work some, some good rusting in. And I'm, I'm just going to streak across this, rust this part out. Let's do some streaking right here. What the heck? It's a... An area that hasn't been hit so I usually like to streak first you know just smudge it up a bit I'll streak up an area with the darker rust just kind of do some streaks like that to really bring it bring it up I love this is you take this right here you take the orange rust and what I like to do with that is kind of go more of of our streaked area right there I like that just hit right in the center of just a little bit just kind of bring some livening up and you can just start hitting little areas with this stuff and it gives you a really outstanding rust effect I love this orange rust I'm just gonna run it on on like all the raised areas just hit the corners and just have fun with it and we'll make happy little rust spots you can really see how the orange really on the on this nato black the orange just pops up and just creates a, a really great rust effect and you go over some of your like your nuts and bolts and you know how nuts and bolts will always rust because they're usually not painted so you run over all those real lightly, just hit them light like that. It brings them out, all the different detail. We're not going for a really, really rusted, rusted out car here. Um, we're wanting street grime and your, your typical just surface rust on you know an undercarriage of a car. It never gets cleaned. So we're not trying to create rust holes or, or you know cancerous rust, rusty rust bucket. It's not a rust bucket car we're building. It's a kind of a junker, but this is a drivable car with a pretty solid chassis, and this is just years of everyday road use. So there we go. Some rust streaks. Might even go back with some of the darker rust. And again, hit some of these areas with darker rust. That is the use of these Timia Weathering Masters. I found these at Andy's Hobby Headquarters. He sells them. They're pretty readily available. Again, these I've kept these kits for years. They last a long time. They're still in great shape. These are excellent. Look them up. Now, another way of doing things, too, I want to show you. 
and this is actually a whole new thing for me. I've watched Andy do it a ton on his channel. I say really highly, highly recommend you. You hardcore car guys, don't shut your mind off to the tank guys. Because if you're interested in doing these models that are realistic and not everything has to be show pristine, watch what these tank guys do. And Andy is one of the best. I'll tell you, his, uh, his weathering demos are great. But I'm trying to bring some of that to you car guys. Next, I'm going to use some new stuff that I have never used before. And I'm real excited. Is this MIG streaking rust effects and there's also another one called uh, streaking grime and this is something really cool that we're gonna have to use enamel thinner okay I got some just some oh I've had this for years some model masters airbrush thinner it's just enamel thinner but in any hardware store enamel thinner you want to get kind of a brush like this right here and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to work on, let's say this area here. We're going to go ahead and just cover everything with, with the, the enamel thinner. Now I'm going to take with a brush, it's kind of a mangled little, little brush, but I'm going to go ahead and take some of my streaking rust. I'm just going to dab a little here. Let's get some dab a little there, dab it up a bit, dab, dab, dab. We'll put some up in there. We can just do this. Get some of that enamel away. You can kind of, you know, push some of this stuff, or if there's too much there, you know, just kind of let it streak down. Yeah, we're wanting this this wheel well to look real. real rusted up and we're gonna later put some mud in here but this will get the rust to look where it just builds up in there and you just kind of streak you can just take your brush and with with it thinned like this you can pretty much you want to flip it around like this because you want to do a little bit of you, like gravity would work and just kind of streak downward like that and and I just, just like to flick it or, or lightly hit it like that so what we're gonna do now is it's still pretty wet it doesn't really look like anything in particular but when this dries I want to get that streaking around like the tire going around and throwing stuff up into the wheel well. We're going to let that dry and we are going to get ourselves a really neat effect. You watch when it's all dry. Alright, so it's pretty well dried and you can see how we got our rust in there all kind of streaked around there. And now we're going to kind of do the same thing which normally I would have done this along with the the rust, we're going to do the same thing but with a streaking grime. So I'm going to take the big brush and just apply the enamel thinner. But we wanted to do a couple of different things. Now we're going to take our dark streaking grime and we're just going to take a dab on my small brush and just kind of put it in just a few places. Let's, let's hold it up for you to see. Just going to dab it in a few places. Not really anything. Don't want a lot. Of, not really uh, anything uh, major. We don't, we're just putting blobs on there right now because it's all going to get kind of worked in. So we got a few spots right there. I'll put some right up here and up here. Just where road grime would collect then we're going to take our little bit bigger brush here and just kind of hit this stuff and just streak it streak it down or really doing this upside down we should do it like this so I'm going to just streak some of this like such this stuff right here can get streaked this we're going to streak kind of upward because it would be kicked up 
by the tires. We just want to follow the pattern of the of uh, you know the rotation of the tires. This just grimes everything up. We can start. We could even like just lightly hit. Look at right there. Just go ahead and grime this whole all this up with this. And we're going to set that down and let that dry. So uh, it's getting pretty dry, and you can just see how it's it's grimed up pretty good in there with the rust color and the streaking grime and if you can see right there all the streaks that, that are running up and down and we did a little bit of streak in here I'm gonna do that and all over this thing right here I just want to show you that but we're gonna move on to the next step and we're gonna create kind of a caked on dirt look and kind of a mixture of dirt and rust is we're now gonna play with some powders Put that right there. I'll do it right here. We're going to take some Vallejo weathering powders. Now I'm going to take this uh, light sienna. It's kind of a you know sand looking color here, and we're just going to take this powder here. Just get a little bit of it. We'll just use a little bit of it like that. And uh, we're going to take this uh, old rust pigment and another powder that uh, will give it kind of a it's, a, it's a nice, again, that, that orange rust look. We're going to put a little bit of that down there. So now that we got our little powder concoction going there, I'm going to take my brush here and I'm going to take some enamel thinner and kind of mix it in there and kind of make some mud, make a paste, a, a, a muddy paste. <laughs> Let's do that. Just get that all grimed up. That's going to make a good rusty mud crud gunk yuck. Got that all gooped up real good and we can just like start caking it on in all the areas that you'd get a build up. I'm going to take my smaller brush I think so I can have a little more control and just get it up in those corners and just kind of crud it up. Now we're going to really build it up a lot but later when this dries we're going to get in there and knock a lot of it off so um, it kind of looks like, oh geez, you're just covering up all the work you just did. Well, nah, not really. We can get some mud up in here. It's not in, in, up in there, and you want to kind of get it up into these areas where the mud and rust would would collect up, and you know, and probably never get out of there. You can just. And you can kind of see it's already starting to dry up, making a few muddy areas. You can reactivate it with a little more of your thinner. This is the underside of a car, so it's going to see a lot of dirt. Get a whole bunch built up in there. You can see how it's looking already all dried up. And again, like what we did before, you want to start adding some colors to it just to change it up a bit so it's it's not all the same color. So we're going to put a little bit of streaking grime in here. I'm going to add a little right there. And we're going to mix this up and now it's going to make it a little more darker. And we can start blotting that in areas too. 
look at how it's drying up and caking up and giving us a real good kind of a filthy look here. Get some of that darker. And we're actually going to let that dry and we're going to chip some of that away so that it uh, looks a little more toned down a bit. You know, you always got to build it up and then knock it down. Okay, so everything's all dry now. And what we're going to do is we're going to start knocking this all off. So I'm going to take this brush. It's kind of better to have a little bit more stiffer brush, but um, this will do. And you see it just start knocking all this. It's, it's basically dirt now. We're going to knock all the the hard stuff off. I'm not going to keep some of this up there because I like how it's all caked on in there but knock a lot of that off and kind of you know gives a gives a, a dusty dirty look. And it's just throwing dirt everywhere. Blow that off. But we basically want to get it dusted away. And see how now you got the streaking grime still showing and some of that streaking uh, rust, if you can see it up in there, um, giving different contrast colors. And it just looks filthy and old and rust and road grime. And you got all different kinds of colors of dark and light and orange rust and dirt and it all works good together and that, that excess that you flaked off and you kind of can smudge that around and kind of dry brush it all over the place but you want to work it in and look at that you got yourself a nice dirty wheel well or wheel tub and we'll do that in a bunch of different areas but I'm going to go ahead and do this same effect on different areas around this uh, this frame and chassis and floor um, everything so it'll kind of the whole bottom is going to have this look and this is where we're going for a road use you see the difference here got a little over here just knock all that loose excess off and we are in a really good shape but you see how that NATO black just was just the right color to have that still you could tell at one time it was black and now it's it's just road grime and rust and chipped and all kinds of neat effects like that so I got everything is all nice and dry it's been a few hours later and uh, I'm really getting the look that I want and you can see all the rust and dirt and I got everything covered and there's a couple of things I did I, I mixed up more of that uh, kind of a, a dirty rust putty that I made with the different powders and, and enamel thinner and uh, got it all in these really cool spots but then another thing I did is after I got done putting that mixture of putty on everything that we did here I took before it was all you know dried out um, I took some dark streaking grime and this kind of gives a good oily mud effect or you, you know that look when you see the dirt and rust all combined underneath the car and then there's also oil added to it. So I mixed a little of this and thinned up my drying batch that I made. It, it, it kind of brought it back to life because it's thinned it out and uh, I went ahead and started touching areas with that and just kind of streaking across here and there and you can see some here and that brought in a little bit darker oily muddy look onto some areas just that's the the neat thing is when you're doing this you just play with it you, it's all layers you put a layer of uh the rust that you mix up with that 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 putty and the that you made with the powders and the enamel thinner and then you just start adding things like the dark streaking grime and then you change the color a little bit and then you start adding on top of that and that's what gives you your layers and your realistic look because everything's random in life you know you, it's just it 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 happens and that's what you want to make it look like you want it to look like it just happened over time so the last step here to just add that last layer to give you your realism is I'm gonna take a toothbrush here and uh, we're gonna take our washes I'm gonna start with 
some of the streaking rust effect and uh, and this gets kind of messy and random so I think I'm gonna bring my little paint thing I set up so give me a second here let's get this okay and you're gonna see why I wanted to get this into my little paint box here because we're gonna be taking this toothbrush here let's get our rust, rusting streaking rust effect stuff here I'm just gonna take this little cup that I had that paint mixed in there Get a little bit more. Let's get that in there. And this should give us enough. You want to thin it down, so I'm going to get a little bit of enamel thinner into the streaking rust and thin that up a bit. So now that we got that thinned up, we'll go ahead and get it mixed and all watery. And we're going to take it and get it on, get our toothbrush full of it get it on the toothbrush and just kind of start flicking away see that I just flick getting a lot on my finger I'm just flicking this mist all over and what this is going to do when it dries is it's just going to give some speckles of rust you just keep on taking your thinned rust and just you know, just give it some flicking. When that dries up, it's just going to give kind of a, a a rough rust look on things. It, it'll kind of accent all your rusted areas and, and your dirt areas. Point the camera. See all the speckles I got all there? This stuff flies everywhere. So you want to do it in a kind of a protected area so you don't get it all over your workspace and have speckles all over the place. That's going to give us a really neat effect. I can already see it drying and giving us a added layer to our effect. You know what the heck? Let's do. Let's let's have some fun. I'm going to take some dark streaking grime I got here. Let's go ahead and put some dark streaking grime in and flick that around and and what the heck? Let's let it fling. And you know what? It, it you could do multiple colors. It's like another another thing that I think would look really great is maybe get some lighter uh, washes, like a sand or something like that. You can flick over it. Just get it on your toothbrush, and uh, you know I'm not gonna brush my teeth anymore with this one. I probably should have bought a new toothbrush before I went and got this out of the bathroom. Ah, uh, you know, modeling it always comes first. I'm going to take a little bit of this streaking grime and just kind of hit a few areas that would have, you know, a little more oil introduced into, you know, whenever there's a little bit of engine oil flying off the car or, uh, you know, stuff gets onto the drivetrain and slung around. You know, you're always going to have a little bit of a drip or leakage from all your mechanical parts like your transmission and your rear end. So, you know take some streaking grime and just I'm gonna flick it flick a little here it's kinda of thick it's not thin down but well, what the heck it's just I'm just go follow I just hit certain areas and just fling across here I think I'll chill it out by hitting it with a dry brush ooh that went nuts that had some thinner on it that actually probably helped streak it a little more that should be interesting. You know, sometimes an accident can create... Um, I didn't realize there was some thinner on this brush. I had forgotten. You guys didn't tell me. Thanks a lot. But when I was planning on dry brushing, it ended up being a little bit of a wet brush and spilled a bunch of thinner here. But you know what? That That is okay because who knows what kind of effects. You can already see I've got some streaking happening. And, you know, I'm, I'm going like this because I'm kind of following... As the car rolls down the road, uh, you know, everything would fly towards the back. So, um, from the wind and everything that gets underneath the car. Now, I think we're going to have some really good, you know, dirty, oily mud effects happening here. With some streaks here and there. Just because I feel like it and I'm having fun. Because that's what model building is, is having fun. And we're just going to do... 
happy little oil streaks. There. We'll let that dry, we'll see what it looks like, and uh, I think we got ourselves our weathered out undercarriage look. And I'll tell you, I've done this over the years a million different ways with whatever products is out there. Even at one time, I just flat out used real dirt and real oil and mixed up and did a lot of weathered cars like that. I got the effect I wanted. It was really great, but you can really fine tune it now today with these companies like Vallejo and MIG. They make these great weathering products and Tamiya. The, the products we have today are nothing like it was in the past and you can create such realism now because you now have such a a paint palette of beautiful earth colors and natural colors that just allow you to just add a scaled realism to your models today us as model car builders we have always done such shiny beautiful cars it's it's kind of like on our end of the model building spectrum you see it so much is is these cars are from top to bottom underside is everything's perfect and glossy and beautiful and uh and i do those too and have fun with that but sometimes you build a model to look like what our cars really look like that's why i say this stuff that was aimed towards the military guys and what these military guys have been doing for years on tanks and planes and even the you know the sci-fi guys i always liked talking to them and learning how they do the weathering because we can bring it to our end of the hobby with the cars and go for an added realism and i just think it just makes for a more interesting model in my time that i've been talking it has been drying and it just looks great let's just put it around we'll put different angles here let you see look at that that was fun i really had a good time doing this this is bringing so much new joy into my model building that I really needed. I've had such a drought over the past few years and just, I don't know, I just couldn't kick it in gear and get going. And like I said, getting this channel going, all you guys, and starting to do these new ways of building models has just rejuvenated the hobby for me. And I, I if you haven't done this, you got to. You got to really really give this a shot and if you can really see look at this speckling effect look at that you can really see this in the camera that speckling effect just gave that added 3d you know rough rust underside look so that's how we do it here at the model car hobby headquarters facilities hope you learned some stuff and if you have any questions put them down in the comments below and as you can see it can be a lot of fun it really gets very artistic and really lose yourself in it we'll cover all of the rear end suspension and getting that all together in the next video and probably moving also on into the interior and then we'll be getting into the body and getting that car assembled. I'd like to see what you guys have done, so go ahead and if you haven't joined, get onto Facebook and get onto the Model Car Hobby Headquarters group and join up there. We keep on getting more members and there's been some great models getting posted on there. You should see the stuff. Been some really great contributions to that group. Just the model builders and their posts will get you inspired to do whatever you want to do. There's some great ideas on there and some neat models. And of course I got my Teespring. Got the link in the description. That's where you'll find all my t-shirts and mugs and stickers and a hoodie. Go check that out. And I've got links below to all the other YouTube channels of my friends and family. Please check them out and support them. There are some really great stuff on there. And you know what we say. This is me, Lucas E. Keep gluing those fingers together. And keep on cutting that styrene. We'll see you in the next video. End up. Each, each, oh, oh, oh. So, I'm gonna go ahead and knock all this off. What? Here, good night. I'm going to bed. Got the kid to sleep. Really? You, you're bothering me for that as I'm doing a shoot? Subscribe to Cashy Cosplays. Really? Is that what you really? You didn't come in to say good night. Last, last video I made was a cat bed video.
I created a cat bed. You guys like stuff getting made. You watch this crap. Go watch my crap. Cashew Cosplays, YouTube.com. Wow, amazing. You just, you didn't really come in here to say goodnight to me. You came in here to plug your channel. No. Good night. Here, are you happy you got your plug in? I don't like that kid. Where's my pointer? I can't work without my pointer. If I don't have my pointer, I can't work. And if I can't work, I can't point to things. That's a bummer. There's my pointer. Yay! Pointer, yeah. So, and...